And welcome back to Top Shutter Sports. It is Tuesday. It is NBA time. Yo, what's up? What's up? I'm back. You're back. Oh, I'm back. God. Good to have you. Yes. Yes. Right. And you know what? I think we should do a bit of a, a celebration. I think we should. For me being back. So, uh, hold that. Kobe! Hey! I didn't even move. I moved a little. Oh! <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> Alright, All right. so I've been out of the loop for since we recorded baseball, so I have no idea like what's two, happening on day. like what's happening right now. Um, I mean, what are we what are we talking about with NBA? What happened? Well, really, only one major thing happened this past week. A couple minor. Let's start with the minor things. So Danny Green signs a two-year, thirty million deal with the Lakers. That's minor. I think that's uh, a little overpaid. Yeah, a little bit, but uh, a little I think bit. I mean. This is a guy that we've been talking about. Right. Great fit, no matter what, where, pretty much wherever he goes. And definitely they have the cap the room to do it. Yep. So why the hell Wait, not? Why do the Lakers have so much cap room? Oh, because Jared Dudley took a discount to sign with him. Oh, I don't know okay. if we touched on that either. Okay. I think we did, um, but we'll say it again. Oh, and the, he's a joke. The Anthony Davis trade technically didn't go through yet. Right, so um, they have the room. So that they can still uh, try, and, uh, try and sign like Kawhi. Right. Um, Kyle Korver. Is rumored uh, he got bought out by the so, Suns. So by the Suns, right? Because they don't need another guard. Because Lord knows they have enough. Um, so the rumored teams to sign him, I believe, help me out. It's the Sixers. Sixers. Lakers. <laughs> the Lakers, right? There was one other team. Uh, either way, he's he's another kind of guy he's that can like fit Danny in anywhere. Green. Yeah. Um, Cheaper. So we'll see what happens there. That has as of this recording not happened yet that was one of the worst trades i have oh. ever seen atrocious um oh speaking of trades so paul george got traded to the los angeles clippers wait why why would the clippers they want a star they missed out on Kawhi, so they wanted to bring him in oh my god they send four unprotected first round picks and i believe a fifth first round pick as well or fifth pick right i believe it was four it's five first round picks. Four of them are unprotected, yeah. one of which is protected, and then they're doing two pick swap. Crazy. Uh, and Dan Danilo Gallinari. And Shai Gaglori. Uh, <laughs> He's so glorious. Yes. Alexander, uh, the guy who played for Kentucky. Um, yeah, that could, yeah. He also is going in, in return, so. Uh, All for Paul pretty George. Pretty good haul. All for Paul George. For the Thunder. Um, I, I like I, it. I, the Clippers kind of need to do something else, in my opinion. If, if, they, if I mean, I don't think Paul George is the answer. No, nah, but you know who would help? Uh, hang on. Sorry, my, my phone. I got I to gotta answer this. If they were able to bring in some more role pieces, uh, not, there's not a ton still available here. But um, you, you fill out the roster a little bit with the money that they have left. You build around Paul George. They were a playoff team last year. So it's not like, it's not like you're, um, what are you, what are you doing? I turned my phone. Oh, well, anything good? Yeah. You had to do that in the middle of recording? Hello? I mean, this is really unprofessional. Yeah, Woj? What'd Woj say? My God. What'd Woj say? They got him. What? <laughs> Who? Kawhi. Kawhi. Who? Toronto. Like I said. He's going to Los Angeles. Oh, fuck. The Lakers. Are you freaking... God damn it. He's going to the Clippers. The Clippers? The Clippers. Oh, well, he this is it all makes sense scenario. Now. It all makes sense. Of course. This is awesome. It's a perfect fit. Of course fit. they sign. It's a perfect fit. They, or of course they trade for Paul George. Because they got Kawhi. Oh, so it was a trade. Okay, that and, makes sense. And, and, it all and, and, and Lou Williams and Patrick Beverly. Mm -hmm. The Clippers. Landry Shaman. Going to be a very nice team. Here's what I see now with the Clippers, right? You have two of the better defenders in the league in Pat Beverly and Kawhi Leonard. 
you have two of the better three-point shooters in the league, and Landry Shamit and Paul George. They're really going to be able to spread the floor, play really solid defense, and then you have one a top five player in the league in yes. Kawhi as well. Yes. The Clippers are looking really good. Now, really good. Move, I like it. Obviously, Kawhi signing with the Clippers. What can we now expect? From the other, two, the, I mean, really, the only two teams that were in on him anymore, the Lakers and the Raptors. Start with the Lakers. What can we expect from them now? Well, the Lakers have ten guys on the contract now. Um, we were just talking about this a couple uh, couple days ago. Um, their bench isn't anything spectacular. It's really unimpressive to me. Even their starting lineup, outside of uh, you know the three of Kuzma, Davis, and LeBron, right? Because um, Javale McGee is going to be a starter for them. And like I don't know, it, it's not great, uh, but I think they will be fine, because um, obviously you have LeBron and Anthony Davis. It's not like they're gonna miss the playoffs. They're gonna be great. They're still yeah. a contender, but there's certainly um, I, I know they were waiting on Kawhi's decision to really do anything, and now a lot of good free agents have since passed. Yeah. So I think what we can expect are some more of the moves that they made, signing guys similar to Danny Green. Mm -hmm. I think this makes them a bigger player for Corver now. Uh, Iggy could still get bought out, so right. there's another guy that they could look to add. Um, It'd be a good fit. They have a lot of money, and I kind of expect them to spend it a little dumb um, and kind of overpay players. But as long as they don't lock into long-term contracts, they'll be able to bring in a big three or a third uh, big name. Spending stupid player. money works. Just ask the Phillies. What does this mean for the Raptors? <laughs> well, so glad you asked. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you can take this one. Uh, Raptors were apparently approached by the Thunder uh, looking to give up Paul George and Russell Westbrook for Pascal Siakam, and I'm assuming, it's safe to assume that more uh, like draft uh, compensation would be in on that. Uh, not sure any other players that were mentioned, but kind of makes sense to get a guy like Siakam back. However, the Raptors were not fond of this idea um and in the end no this was pre Kawhi's decision right yes. so they were probably thinking well if we take this we don't have the money to sign Kawhi yeah so um this opened uh, the door for the Clippers to move in so now what do the Raptors have to do they've got Lowry they've got Siakam they've got Gasol they still have a solid three right there they'll be a playoff team yeah but are they a contender still I don't think so because here's the thing, they were a contender before Kawhi, but they had DeRozan as well. They don't have DeRozan or Kawhi anymore. Yeah. That's those are two very good players. That's a big deal. Like I I don't know. I don't and think there's nobody a, else anymore. really left on the market. Unless they trade. Unless they trade. Got like Andrew Wiggins is available. There are rumors that he Who could knows? go to Toronto. Um but I don't see Angelo that. Russell, uh, but he I don't think can be traded until January. Not for Aaron, not for so uh, this move really hurts the Raptors. Yes, uh, it really helps the Sixers. It really helps the Nets, the Pacers, the Bucks, Pacers, Celtics, Celtics. Uh, That's probably it. Because now those probably those six, if you and then group the Raptors in with that, right. are going to be vying for the East um, heavily. Uh, it also helps balance out the West a little more by giving another contender Absolutely. over there. Uh, because for almost all of the offseason, all anybody could talk about was how the Lakers were going to run away with it. Um, now you have Kawhi and Paul George as a duo out there. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of duos more so than it is these big three, because uh, Golden State doesn't really their big three doesn't really scare me that much anymore um so it can be interesting this is the best case scenario for the league worst case scenario for the raptors yeah. uh okay scenario for the lakers because they still have the money they can still sign yeah. guys uh they probably won't be able to trade to bring anybody in because they really don't have any assets in that uh right. in that field but nonetheless i want to say i i think it's um I think the Thunder are going to get a lot of heat, heat for like the moves they're making, but I think they're being very smart. They're seeing what's happening around them in the Western Conference, what with the Jazz making moves, the Clippers, the Lakers, and they know, I mean, the Rockets are still good, the Warriors mm -hmm. are still good. They know that they're not going to be able to do it now with the team they currently had in place, right. given their cap flexibility and just their roster. So they're 
already planning now for the future. They're loading up the draft picks. They're going to start kind of a rebuild, and hopefully, I for their sake, by the time uh, you know they're very good again and they get bring in good young players through the draft, uh, the West will kind of be you know these super teams we're, we're seeing forming in the West will kind of be gone, and then they'll have a chance to rise right to the top again of, of the Western Conference. I really like what the Thunder are doing. I, they're, it's very self-aware of them, what they're doing, I think. It's a good move, but the scary thing is, four unprotected first-round picks is great and all, but... The Clippers if, will be good. The Clippers are good. But you can still package draft. those, move up, I mean, build up. depth, you know. But people make mistakes in the draft. They do. All the time. So, uh, the draft isn't a, a shoo-in in any... No way, shape, or no. form. I mean, just look at this year. There were only three guys that we were really talking about that we know for a fact are going to make an impact at right. the NBA level immediately. Everybody else, it's kind of up in the air as to whether or not they're going to be a role player or they are going to be a star or they're going to just be a bench player. We don't really know. So I will just say, though, like what, like what I do still like it because essentially now if you go way back, the Thunder were able to turn Serge Ibaka into all of these first-round picks that they just got from Paul George essentially, when you look at the chain of trades that started with Serge Ibaka. So I think ultimately, when you look at all of that, uh, I do I do like an their interesting return, way to look at it. you know? Yeah. I do like the return there. Yeah, they also got two capable players, so yeah. can't forget about that. All just for Paul George, which is crazy. And now, crazy. now that Paul George is gone, Russ can, instead of putting up 30 shots a game, he can put up like 40 or 50. And I mean, he'll good definitely for average a triple-double. Oh, for sure. It'd be weird if he didn't. He should. Absolutely. There's no excuse not to. Absolutely. On that team now. But, yeah. I think that about covers That's all I have to say on Kawhi. But awesome stuff. I mean, good for the league. Yeah, like you said, it's uh, that was exciting. And now that free agency is pretty much, pretty much done. Yeah. So. Yeah, that should just about So moving forward, we'll uh, probably do a little preview of each team, each conference, kind of give some predictions, some analysis uh, as we – Play through the summer league and wait towards the regular season to start. Yeah, with how fast the NBA offseason moved, I think right. it will be good to kind of break down a team by team and look at who they added, who they could still potentially add, depending on how deep we are or how close we are getting to the season, um, and kind of give a prediction as to where we see them falling Yeah, absolutely. As, as the season unfolds. Absolutely. So, yeah, that'll do it for us here at Top Treader. Top Treader Tuesdays for the NBA action from the past week. And that will once again, officially this time, do it for us. This will be the last video of us together. Uh, like he, For now. Like we mentioned, we might do some conference calls or whatever, yeah. but last in person for the foreseeable future for a while. It's been real. Those that actually watched consistently, we really appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed all the intros. We tried to make them as fun as we could. We'll continue to. Um, One man intros. Those are tough. <laughs> Can't wait. Those are tough. Well, yeah, leave a like, leave a comment. Uh, let us know what you think about Kawhi and his decision. Smash that subscribe button. I'll let you have it because yes. it's your last one. <laughs> yes. Smash that subscribe button. Uh, I've been Brett. Uh, you've been Brett? Yes, I won't be anymore. I've been Spencer. I'll be sad uh, oh. in the future. <laughs> And that'll do it on the Beer League Bench Talk.